Fantard here, here to talk about Food Wars Episode 7. Man, this, in my opinion, is probably the most well done episode so far, as far as like pacing goes and timing and just the way the anime, I feel like the anime really put a lot of work into this series, uh, this this battle between Korokibe and, Hi uh, and then uh, Akira. Which I'm like, oh man, this is like probably my favorite episode so far because I think it was really well done, well done with the balancing outside of the battle and then the actual battle and itself. Because like the previous episodes, I was kind of upset because I felt like the pacing was way too fast for Somas and uh, the Mr. Stalker guy over there. Because when it, when in the manga, there are like things that happen outside of the battle of that that Shokugeki that made you feel like. He like Subaru was a really big time stalker. Like it really freaked you out in the manga. The way the drawings were, his face was, and I felt like the pacing was too fast, and it took away from how much of a stalker he really is. There are some things that he said outside of the match that really freaky the fuck out. So I didn't really reveal those ones because like I didn't, I didn't have time honestly, and then it kind of pissed me off how fast it was. I was like reading the subtitles, I had to keep looking up because I felt like it was one going fast forward. I was like, hold on, I gotta skip back. But this episode was really done. I felt like it was a lot slower. They slowed it down a bit because they were like really want to uh, push it into you how interesting these two characters are between Korokiba and Hayama. Uh, this this whole arc has been about different characters, different ideals, different kinds of battles, and the way that these characters are, how they're not like uh, they're not one dimensional. They have different types of characters. They have different different layers to their character. You have. Kurikibe, who's all like macho and strong and tries to destroy his opponent at all costs. He goes like full on hardcore. There's like no playing around with your opponent when it comes to food wars. Where Hayama is really calm, collected. He he goes hard in during the actual like showing of the food, but he's so calm and collected. More of a passive aggressive. And it was really interesting seeing these two go head on because Kurikibe was getting like pissed off. He's like, man, I'm not feeling the intensity. This is a battle for me. This is like, you know, you're not acting all tough. You know, I, feel, I don't feel like you're not taking this seriously, but Hayama takes this shit seriously. Like, just as much as Kotakiba. He just has a different way of going about it, which I really thought was interesting between these two characters. Uh, this episode, uh, we get more into Kotakiba's backstory, though, through the dialogue of Alice, Soma, and uh, Eddie now, which I thought was fucking hilarious when Soma snuck up into the VIP room. And you see, like, some confrontation between him and Edina. She gets upset that he's at, after, like, that, she, that she, he's up there because she feels like, oh, you're a two-way chef, you're not supposed to be up there. But then she calms down, and then she acts all normal with Soma. So, you know, she doesn't hate Soma. It's pretty obvious about that, if, you know, been watching this anime. She just gets bugged by him, but they can easily, they can get along pretty fine after seeing this episode. They're able to talk, able to discuss things. And same with Alice. I really like the dynamic between this whole cast, how everything is, like, Everything that is done, all the battles are in the kitchen. Outside, they're they're good friends. Everyone gets along fine. There's no bad blood. Unless uh, you're uh, the Subaru guy who was the soccer who pissed off Aldini. He might be the exception to that. But everyone has, everything is done in the kitchen. There's no bad blood. You know, that's what I really like about this series. But it was really fun seeing those three interact. But when Alice and Edina were talking about uh, Korokibe, because most of this episode was about him and his backstory, she would always talk about how Korokibe was always kind of just getting by, you know? He, he, his dishes weren't, like, great, but there weren't enough to fail you, so he was able to always get by. And Alice is like, oh, you don't understand how Korokibe cooks. But in the flashback, they show Korokibe, and he's not wearing his bandana, so I'm pretty sure that whenever he was always cooking for the school, he never had his, um, his bandana on. He never brought that intensity, which I think his intensity is a good chunk of how he cooks. It really brings out the monster in him, especially with that bandana. It's just, it's a, it's a hilarious quirk that he has. So, it like, it's like Korokibe holds back for the battles. His special intensity that he brings in is for the battles specifically. Where the cooking itself, he knows enough to get by and he still is able to improve himself though through all the cookings that he has with, has with Alice. Which, um, another duo too that I think is really interesting is Kodagiba and Alice. Like, I kind of ship them, but like at the beginning you see him all doing push-ups, you know, he's all sweaty and stuff like that. I'm like, damn, the fool's ripped. And you see Alice show up and he sh shows up and he provokes her by saying, Oh, you're like, you don't seem that pissed off that you could hit that one. That's probably why you lost in the first place. So they, And then it's like, oh, you're provoking me. So then they just have like a cooking battle. And then Alice discusses how the difference between her and him is that he has this desire that's almost like 
uh, obsessive and crazy how much he really wants to win. It's like he can't stand it if he doesn't win. Everything that his desire to win, like obviously everyone else has a desire to win, but he, he takes it to another level. But the thing is though, is that they talk, they talked about Kodakiba and his level of wanting to win, but they never they don't go into the backstory of Haimas yet, which I think is a good balance. And it's kind of like a foreshadowing, thinking that maybe Hayama probably wasn't going to lose yet because we haven't seen his backstory yet. So if you had read the manga or not, and you didn't, you noticed that they didn't talk about Hayama's backstory much that, that at all, that was probably a good foreshadowing that maybe Hayama wasn't going to get kicked out too early. And the way they do this uh, is actually a good way. I like the way the manga, the writer did this, and the anime, they, they really bring in the tension how how awesome the next couple episodes are going to be because when they put out their two dishes, uh, Kurokiba uses eel, Haima uses duck, they both <laughs> end up tying it up and the whole bat, the end ends up being a draw, right? And it's the sequence of the battle of them using cards and going after each other and how they're playing a card game and then like uh, Kurokiba represents the tiger and then Haima represents the eagle or the hawk, something like, that, like a pretty badass bird and I'm like, <laughs> this is a pretty good description, man. It fits their personalities both pretty damn good. Uh, so we get the, the judges who can't decide and it ends up being a draw. And so what they do end up deciding is that it's going to be a three-way battle between Kodakiba, Haima, and Somokun. And that's going to be fucking awesome, man. I also thought it was a really good adding touch how they decided to add that in. Because the judges are like, oh, they asked the Elite Ten, can we do this? And they said, oh, I don't think you can. But then you get the director, uh, Saizuma, and he's like, oh, yeah, we're definitely going to do this. Oh. That sounds very interesting to me. I'm like, this voice sounds so badass. He sounds like the dawn of the fucking food wars. Everything's coming together. Obviously, Kurokiba and Haima were not happy with the result. Haima was a little more calm about it. Kurokiba was pissed, though. He's showing it. And it was funny the way Alice pulled off his man. Dad's like, hey, calm the fuck down, man. That's enough of this shit. He's like, okay, good job, bye. And I'm like, oh, man, that shit was hilarious. Now, Here's the the thing at the very end of the episode where they uh, bring in Soma, and the, uh, Haima, Kurokiba, and they're all like interviewing them and talking and Soma's like hyped up too and everyone's fired up as well. But people were surprised that Haima lot, uh, had a draw with Kurokiba because apparently Haima is the, he's the favorite. And what I think is funny is that one of the judges mentioned that outside of Nakiri Alice, he's the favorite to become an Elite 10. But I'm thinking, man, Nakiri came in with a lot of hype. Alice, but she got taken out with Soma, so that just goes to show you what like that matchups matter and the type of cooking matters, you know? It's like the way the the cooking is set up, it's not set in stone who's gonna win. And I just love the dynamic of this show, how it's not you know, it's not set in stone, it's uh matches matter, ma uh matches styles make fights, as so to say, like in the MMA world or in the fighting world. So it really does feel like a Battle, uh, a battle manga with cooking, and when I really like that about that. But at the end, Kodakiba is kind of like talking smack to Haima, saying, "Oh, you're one dimensional." He's like, "What?" And at first, he looks all calm. And towards the end of the, and towards the end of the episode, Haima has this serious look, and you see like this aura coming around him. I can't wait for them to get into his backstory because people talk about Kodakiba being hardcore and like growing up in a kitchen out of hell. I can't wait for them to show Haima's backstory because, oh, I'm hyped up. Man, my favorite episode so far. I really loved it. The dynamic of it. Just the way watching it and the way it was done. I'm going to give this a Fantar review. Fucking Fantar. Not a 1 out of 1, not a 2 out of... Not a 2 out of 5, not a 3 out of 5, not a 4 out of 5, not a 5 out of 5. Fantar out of 5. Never go full Fantar unless it's for Shokugeki no Soma. Peace, bitches.